Sin penetrates through thoughts. If you can stop the thought, you have, you have conquered the sin. Obedience is the covenant principal channel of blessing. Principal channel. Principal channel. Obedience. If you will diligently hearken to my voice and observe to do the commandments of the Lord as I command you today, that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of so the earth. The problem is not the sin. The problem is who is telling you you are sinning. This is the reason you hear great people or rather young or some new preachers are coming in and telling you you should stop this, you should stop this, you should stop this. That's the law you are preaching. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. For many times you're telling them thou shalt not, thou shalt not. What do you think is going to happen? They'll keep doing it. Hello dear. I know by the grace of God you are fine. What Jesus Christ did for us is the most important thing that he has ever done. Dying for our sins. Because God himself knew that sin has been completed in our hearts and we cannot do anything about it. If you read the book of Isaiah chapter 64 verse 5, he said, Our righteousness is like a filthy rag in the sight of God. So no one can please God. No one on this planet can please God. That's why God sent his beloved son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for our sins. So that whosoever believe in him will never perish but have everlasting life. So you don't have to be boasting that you can do things on your own. You have to let Christ be your righteousness. He is the author and the finisher of our feet. That's the most important thing. A lot of people brag that they can fulfill or they can obey the commandments of God. You can't do it. You are just human. Remember that perfection is in the hands of God. You are just a mere human being. So relax and have faith in Christ so that when you find yourself no more on this planet that you can get a better place for yourself or for your soul. I'm going to show you a quick video from Bishop David Oyadipo trying to let us understand that we can stop sin. Let's listen to what he said. Sin penetrates through thoughts. If you can stop the thought, you have, you have conquered the sin. Obedience is the covenant principal channel of blessing. Principal channel principal channel obedience if you will diligently hearken to my voice and observe to do the commandments of the Lord as I command you today that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings will come to you and overtake you And I will cause your enemies that rest up against you to be smitten before your face. They come against you in one way, I will make them flee in seven ways. So he brings you to the blessings and preserves the blessings. Obedience, the covenant principal channel Flamboyant lifestyle. of blessings. Until you know and embrace obedience, you don't know his blessings. Until you know and embrace obedience, you don't know his blessings. Can I tell you the weakness? I mean, the, the, the weakness of sin. Sin penetrates through thoughts. If you can stop the thought, you have, you have conquered the sin. <laughs> Mark 7, 21 to 23. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceeds evil thoughts. Which includes adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defy the man. So instead of fighting something external, conquer the thoughts. You have conquered the vices. Stop the thought. How do I stop it? And get the blood against it. 
The blood is only access to our conscience. The blood. The blood. When the blood comes in, eh? Hebrews 9, 14, it cleanses all from every dead work or dead thought to serve the living God. Praise God. How much more shall the blood of Christ purge our conscience from evil works or evil thoughts to serve the living God? The blood of Jesus. No, not here. The blood of Jesus. No, not here. The blood of Jesus. No, not here. The blood of Jesus. No, no, no. Then the blood speaks. I say, free, free, free. Is the blood that speaks better than the blood of Abel? It speaks liberty. What does it speak? Liberty. It said, Turn to your son, go to his prisoners of hope. Even today, do I declare that I will render the woman to you? The blood of Jesus has stronghold in battle. If you read that Zechariah chapter, is it nine? You start from um, nine, you find the rider of the ass, Jesus. As for the, by the blood of the covenant of the rider of the ass, I've set for your prisoners out to the peace where there is no water. Turn to your song, even today I, will, I declare I will render double unto you. You can free your conscience, not by tongues, only, by the blood. You better apply the appropriate weapon. If they give you something for eye drop, you put it in the air, it will deafen your ear. <laughs> tongues can't clear your conscience. It's the blood. A bit correct treatment. <laughs> That means of no use if the treatment is not correct. The blood. Obedience. Now, you know something? That's a lifeline. No evil thought will survive in your heart again. I know you finished watching the video. In which Bishop Ayadepo has let us understood that we can stop sin. It's impossible, but that is his own opinion and he has backed it with scriptures. I'm going to show you a quick video from Prophet Hubert Angel talking about stopping sin. Let's listen to what he also said quickly. The problem is not the sin. The problem is who is telling you you are sinning. This is the reason you hear great people or rather young or some new preachers are coming in and telling you you should stop this you should stop this you should stop this that's the law you are preaching Amen. thou shalt not thou shalt not for many times you're telling them thou shalt not thou shalt not what do you think is going to happen they'll keep doing it have you not tried to call your own child and say don't do this don't do this did they stop the more you put the law it births all kinds of lasciviousness, meaning to say all kinds of lust. The law births lust. The moment you say don't drink, the lust rises for that drink. <laughs> the Jews were never supposed to follow the law. The laws were given, over 600 of them, they were only given so that every man becomes a what? A liar, as Romans 3 told us. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, by what? By the deeds of the law, by you following, thou shalt, thou shalt not. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That means without the law, we would not know there would not be sin. Romans 7 verse number 8. But sin, taking occasion by the commandments... Sin can only be powerful when there is a commandment that says you should not do it. Uh -uh. Without don't do this, sin is no power. Uh. No, watch this. But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all men of concupiscence. The word concupiscence is like lust. For without the law, sin is dead. Hear me? Okay? Pastor, come here. Stand here. All right? 
So we have, since you are wearing black, you are seen today. <laughs> come, 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 come. Now you are the what? Stand there, stand here. You are the, the law. All right? Come here. So you are the one moving. The moment you grab him, hold here. The moment a Christian holds on to the law, sin is alive. Let's read again. But sin only takes its power from the commandment you should not do it. The moment you tell your child, don't go to the club. They won't go. They will close the door, lock it by the window. Wait, you think they are being disobedient. No, you gave them the power to sin. The moment you introduce the law, you have introduced power to sin. He's holding on to the law. So sin is what? Is active against him. But the moment he says the law should go, you say, the, he goes as the law. The law should go. What happens? Sin also is dead. So sin only exists when you have a law. So now the Bible says Christ came to abolish the law. So is there a sin now? No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's just mathematics. What is left in the church is consciousness of sin. You only sin when you are conscious of it. Hear me, hear me well. The Bible says they caught a woman in adultery, whether she was on top of... Uh, now, they caught her where? In adultery. And the Bible says they were witnesses. They saw it. They pulled her from underneath. Say, so let's go to Jesus. Drag there like this. Let's go to Jesus. When they got to Jesus, Jesus, not, notice what the Bible says. And they saw Jesus. Jesus looks at them and says, Whosoever flamboyant lifestyle has no sin. Notice, not sins, but sin. These were religious Jews of the Sanhedrin. Are you, are you getting this? He that is without what? Sin, John 8, 7. Not sins. He was specifically asking the sin of adultery. Hi, hi, hi. Then the archbishop. He without sin cast the first stone. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Your problem is you don't know what he wrote, but I know it. Because the scriptures are silent about it. But understand when Moses got the writing of the law in the first part, it was the law that God wrote with his finger. And Moses broke those laws and went back and wrote them copying God's handwriting. So whose writing was he copying? Jesus' handwriting. Now when the Jews who keep the tablets saw the handwriting, they realized this one. The handwriting is exactly what we see. You're, you're missing that one, but you get it in a few minutes. For they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the elders. The word elders there, it is the word Sanhedrin. It means the people that rule in the churches, the, the, the writers, the authors of the laws. The big one, the big bishop, is the first to go. He looked at Jesus. Cast the first one, he's like, uh, <laughs> if I don't have a sin, you mean like, like I don't have a sin, and you just, your handwriting is like God. You might actually be Jesus, God himself. The Bible says the big bishop, the archbishop. And the bishop said, ah, the man of God is going. The bishop followed. The assistant bishop said, ah, I'll be left alone here. And what did he do? He left again. Every one of them, there were 71 in the Sanhedrin. All of them left. If you're a Christian, you have to be the most happiest person on this planet Earth, Because your sins have been already forgiven. All you have to do is just to trust and believe in God. Christ Lord Jesus.
because what he did in River Jordan is above human imagination. So take care of yourself. You are no more a sinner. Don't let someone call you a sinner. Don't call yourself a sinner. You are a righteous person. Flamboyant lifestyle. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you another time.